Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Mike from MoboxGraphics.com and in this video tutorial, we're just gonna be taking a look at how to do a simple but somewhat complex um, uh, Microsoft animation in After Effects. So let's just go ahead and jump right into After Effects here. We'll just make it full screen to make it easier to see. And uh, we do have a composition set up here. Let me just check the composition settings real quick. 1920, 1080, uh, 60 frames a second. 15 seconds is probably long enough. I'm just gonna round it out to a perfect 15 and hit okay. And uh, let's start out by actually just creating a white solid background. So layer new solid. Make sure it's set to white, which it is. I'm just gonna hit okay. And I'm just gonna go ahead and lock this layer so that way I don't accidentally grab it. So um, let's start out by making the grid. This is the piece that's probably gonna take the longest and it's probably the most annoying. So let's just kind of get it out of the way fast. Um, there are easy ways to make grids in After Effects. The problem is, is that you don't have granular control over it. So um, we're gonna be doing it by hand. So I just created this uh, square here and I'm just gonna center it up using the align tool. If you don't have that, go to Windows Align and you could uh, have access to that tool. So making this fit to 100%. I'm just gonna start drawing some lines here um, using the grid here. That way it makes it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna wanna make some perfect squares and I don't really know a super simple way to do this except for maybe bring this down and make sure it's perfectly square and then maybe every two lines add a line. I'm just gonna zoom in here, grab the pen tool, click, that looks about right, holding shift. I'm just gonna now click on this side and that will give me a perfect line. So uh, I did scale that outside one up a little bit, but it looks like it's, it's the width is pretty similar. So um, what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna rename this to line just so I know what it is. And I'm going to center up the anchor point, press Y on the keyboard and drag it where it should be centered. And it's giving me a little bit of problem, a little bit of trouble, but we won't be scaling it. So that shouldn't really matter. So it wasn't snapping. Um, okay, so now I'm just gonna move this down here to the bottom. The reason is, is because I'm gonna be duplicating these layers. And when you duplicate a layer by hitting Control D, and adds the new layer on top. So by starting at the bottom, when I duplicate the layers, I'll be building them up and these will all be in order from top to bottom still. So that's the mindset behind that. But before I go ahead and start duplicating these things, I'm just going to select this layer and make sure I have trim paths added. So I'm just gonna add trim paths here. And what that obviously allows me to do is trim this path. So I'm just gonna set it to zero. Um, and then at like 30 seconds, I'm gonna turn it to 100 and see what that looks like. I didn't set keyframes, so it will do nothing. So I'm just gonna make sure I set the keyframe there and come to one second, and turn this to 100 and add some smoothing to this. Again, I'm gonna be using my motion tool, but if you don't have that, you can make sure you try to uh, copy this same, the same graph in the graph editor. So I want it to happen really fast and I think it's happening a little too fast. I think that looks good. And I'm just gonna drag these over to maybe one and a half seconds. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna uh, pre-compose this. So I'm gonna hit Control Shift C and make sure I have move all attributes to new layer. I'm gonna rename this to line comp, which I think it was already, but uh, just gonna hit okay. Now, from this point, I'm going to be duplicating this layer. And the reason why I pre-composed it was that way I can come into this layer, hit you on the keyboard and adjust these keyframes and it will adjust them for all of my duplicated layers. So uh, I'm just gonna again, duplicate this layer and space them out. It's not gonna be exactly perfect, but uh, I'm just trying to eyeball it, making sure it looks good enough. So again, I'm duplicating by hitting Control D here. And I would love to grab multiple and duplicate them, but then I'm gonna have an issue of having to, um, having to then figure out what the order of them is. And so that would, that would take more time as well. 
Um, another option I could have used was the repeater tool. The problem with the repeater then I would have is that you don't get granular control as to when the animations start. They'll all just kind of start at the same time. I haven't been able to figure out how to offset the animations so they kind of happen um, slower, if that makes sense, or, or lagged behind. So if I used a repeater here, these would all kind of animate in at the exact same time. And you know, if that's what you want, you could try to use the repeater. There are tons of tutorials online of how to use the repeater in After Effects and you can go ahead and check those out. But uh, this one, it's not super necessary. So uh, those look pretty good. Um, I guess now what I could do here is I could just expand this so I could see all the layers. And I'm just gonna pre-compose all these, these layers. Control, Shift, well, I should actually probably offset these because again, I'm running into this, I would run into the same problem. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna select all these layers and go down to Keyframe Assistant and Sequence Layers. You wanna make sure you have Overlap selected, but this is where knowing your composition size matters. So remember I made this an even 15 seconds. So if I put in here, Oh, and also I know the frame rate, so it's base 60. So if I make this here 14, and then I set this to 59, this will delay each of these by one frame, right? Because it's 60 frames a second, and it's one frame short of the full 15 seconds. If I set this to 55, it'll delay them each by five seconds, but I think that would be too much. So I'm just gonna delay them by maybe two seconds. So I'm gonna make it 14, 58, hit okay, and it perfectly delayed them by the same amount of time. And so now you have something that kind of looks like that. So that looks pretty cool. And now I could just pre-comp this. Control Shift C. Line Comp 2. You can name it whatever you want. And I'm gonna duplicate this layer and just hit R on the keyboard and rotate this 90 degrees. And let's see what this looks like now. So that looks pretty good. Um, I don't like how it starts in that corner. I wish it kind of started in that corner. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna make this a 3D layer and then rotate it along the Y axis 180. And now I'll have it in the, in the order that I'd want it to be in, just like that. So I like the way that looks there. And let's see here. Uh, I guess next up I should probably reduce the transparency here. So um, let's see, how should I do that? Well, I actually, I should probably animate this first square in first too, huh? So my animations start about this point. So I'm gonna want this here. You could animate this square in however you want. You could even make it be the lines. I just chose not to. Um, let's see what this looks like without that actually. I kind of like it without the square, to be honest. So I'm actually just gonna delete the square and just run, roll it like this. Kind of like this. So I'm just gonna select these and hit T on the keyboard and bring the transparency down. I want it to be really light. And again, I could open up this, this layer here and I could make adjustments to this. So let's say I wanted it, I didn't like the thickness, maybe I wanted it to be 3.8. And let's say, um, I guess the thickness, the color, I could change all kinds of stuff to it and it'll go back and it'll fix it in here. So I think that that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna move these over a tad so it starts a little bit sooner. And now I'm gonna bring in my uh, Microsoft logo. So I've got two sets of logos here. That's the Microsoft logo and that's the Windows logo. So I'm gonna have it start as the Microsoft logo and then I'm gonna have it turn into the Windows logo. So I don't need the Windows logo yet, so I'm just gonna delete that. And I am going to grab this anchor point and put it into the corner here of this logo. And bring the transparency down, T on the keyboard. And maybe bring this just about just about there. And I'm just gonna scale this up until it fits the whole screen. So you can see it's not exactly perfect. So that's probably something I should have thought of before I, st <laughs> before I did this um, and lined everything up, but it doesn't look like I'm gonna have that, that luxury. So let's see here. 
let's see where this where this works. Um, I could just easily delete some of these layers. So let's say I want the logo to be about there. And end about there. So I have, uh, let's see, one, two, three, one, two. So I'm actually gonna need to bring this down by one. And that actually fits just like that. Um, and obviously it's not perfect, but it is what it is. Um, if I was replicating this for Microsoft, I'd probably put in a ton of time and make that perfect, but I don't. So there's no need for that. And now I'm just gonna bring this trans transparency down because I just kind of need to just see where it is and I'm just going to lock these layers so I don't accidentally grab them. So now it's just as simple as coming here holding shift and clicking in the corners of these shapes. I'm just going to center up this anchor point. Press Y just drag it over and do and duplicate this layer. Drag it over until it fits. Duplicate this layer and actually select both of these and duplicate it. Control D. Just kind of center these up. And again, it's not absolutely perfect, but you know, I'm just going to now delete that layer. And so now we're starting to kind of get an idea of what this Microsoft logo is going to look like. So uh, I guess what I should have done first was I should have probably added trim path to these, but I didn't. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. Add trim paths. Good thing about trim paths is that you can actually copy it and paste it on the other layers. Um, and again, I should have probably set the keyframes. So I'm just going to hit Control Z. Uh, just step back a few. Trim paths. Starting here. Set a keyframe. Uh, let's see, where do I want this bad boy to start? So, I'm just going to make sure this offset is set up to a kind of an area, a point that I like. I think I like starting in the top left corner. And I want to start at that point. Let me give it one second. Bring this up to 100. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy this trim paths on these layers. Select them all, hit U on the keyboard, brings up my trim paths. And I'm just gonna drag these in line so they're all starting at the same time and add some motion to this. Again, I'm using my motion script. If you don't have this, you could just copy this in the graph editor. So let's see, I'm just gonna add a little bit more smoothing there. Kind of looks like that. Let's see what this looks like. So it looks a little robotic. Um, I, think, I think sequencing these layers will also help. Again, I could just right click these, keyframe assistant, sequence layers. It actually saved it from last time. And let's see if that helps. It doesn't really help. So I'm just gonna select all of them holding Alt, just drag these keyframes out. And let's see. So one thing I noticed is that actually this one's first, second, third, fourth. I don't like that order. I'm just gonna back up a little bit, make sure that these are in order. So I want this one to be on top. This one's last. That one's second. So I'm just gonna kind of drag these over a few frames and just kind of do it by hand. I think it just happens too fast. So let's go ahead and just see what that looks like. Again, it just happens so quickly. Just gonna kind of test this out, see what kind of works best. I think that maybe is a little too slow. Again, I'm just holding Alt, clicking the last keyframe and just dragging them and it proportionally drags them all. I think that looks pretty good. So. 
Uh, that happens. I'm just now going to control D, duplicate these layers, bring them all to the top. Um, I'm gonna make the outside, outside stroke zero, but I'm gonna make the fill a black color. Or I should probably make, like, make it like a Microsoft blue color or something, huh? I don't know what Microsoft blue looks like, but that probably is around it. Selecting all these layers, just hit S on the keyboard, and I'm just gonna scale them up just so we don't get that black outline anymore. And uh, let's see, what else can we do? Um, I think that that's probably good. Again, I think the, the width here in the center is probably too large for the Microsoft logo, but um, it is what it is, so. Now, okay, so we have these four layers, which are the blue. I'm gonna again use my tool and I'm just gonna use the rename function here to blue. Uh, if you don't have the tool, you could just right click the layer and hit rename. Outline. But again, I'm gonna use my tool here. Mountmograph.com, it's called Motion 2. It's a great tool. Um, and in fact, these, I'm just gonna hit you on the keyboard here and just delete these keyframes. We don't need these trim paths keyframes. But we do need to see, are these keyframes? And so once the trim path is complete, we are going to have these blue transition in. So with an opacity, T on the keyboard at zero. Bring the opacity up. I'm just gonna bounce back to these last keyframes by hitting J and make sure they're all set to zero. It looked like they were set to four. And again, using my tool here, I'll show you what these keyframes look like. Um, these are just very, very lightly smoothed, almost non-existent. At this point now, I can just actually select these outlines, holding Alt, right bracket, just trim these off, so we don't need them anymore. And we can also set the opacity for these line comps. T on the keyboard, set opacity. K on the keyboard bounces to those keyframes, bring that opacity to zero. And again, use my tool here. One thing I like to do when I do this is add a null object to this. Match all of these to the null object. And as this transition happens, scale it down slightly or scale it up. In this case, I'm gonna scale it down slightly and add a little bit of smoothing to that. This is what you're gonna see. I think maybe it needs a little bit more smoothing. Something that looks like that. I think that looks good. Maybe we could even speed this up just a tad. I like that. And what I originally was gonna do is add Microsoft here, which I guess I still can. Let's see. I'm just gonna add a text layer here. Make sure my line spacing is a lot smaller. Now, according to Microsoft, you shouldn't be changing their logo, but this is Mobox and we do what we want. So if that's the logo, I'm gonna need this layer to scale way more down. Something like that. In fact, I have their logo here. I can just use this as an example. So if that's the size, wow, that is almost perfectly sized. Microsoft could grow a little bit. And that probably looks good. Again, theirs is not capitalized, mine is, because that's how we roll around here. And that probably looks fine, so I'm just now gonna delete that guide layer. 
And I am going to have this Microsoft kind of, see how should we do this? I'm gonna make this change position. over, as well as this, which I should have put this keyframe back here. You know, I think they don't capitalize this because it's smaller. <laughs> Is that how you spell Microsoft? It looks funny, but oh well. Um, let's just see if that's centered. I'm just gonna bring up my guides. Looks pretty centered. Make sure I have my null selected here. Holding shift, just making sure that it looks perfect. So that looks pretty good. Again, add some smoothing to this. It's the smoothing profile you're gonna wanna copy. Bring this underneath all those layers. And now I'm just going to make a rectangle and bring it right up to the logo. And I'm gonna make this parent it again to the null object. So when the null moves, it moves. But what this is, this is a matte layer or a mask for my text. Coming in here. Alpha mat, alpha inverted mat, I mean. <laughs> and now you have something that looks like that. Now, I'm pretty sure Microsoft's logo has different colors, which, um, to be honest, I don't really care about. I think this is like blue, green, red, and yellow or something, let's see. Uh, it is, it's red, green, blue, and yellow, but too, too much, too busy for me if you ask me. So, okay. So we have most of it done here. I'm gonna set motion blur on and make sure I set it on for all these layers. What I didn't do is I didn't add motion blur to these layers or this layer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. So now we get the proper motion blur. So let's take a look and see how this looks. By the way, this technique here, this kind of grid effect, I got, I saw somebody who did it on Dribble and it looked so cool. They were doing it with a little bit more of a complex logo. I don't remember who it was. I cannot find who they are. I didn't follow them, unfortunately, but it looks so cool. It's such a cool logo reveal type. So that's Microsoft's logo. And I think, uh, I think it looks pretty good. I'm not in love with this animation here, but I think that we're getting somewhere. Uh, I think it's a little too aggressive. See what that looks like in real time. I think that looks good now. So just so you know what this looks like, that's the graph editor. That's kind of the profile you wanna look. Again, you just adjust these by using these handles there if you don't have this tool. All right. So now what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna reverse these. So I'm just gonna copy these keyframes. I'm gonna copy all of these, all of these key, nope, just those keyframes. Hit Control Shift, if I select these, Control Shift C, Control Shift C, Control Shift V. Highlight these layers, right click them, keyframe assistant, time reverse keyframes. If you get some weird motion in between these keyframes, you're gonna need to make sure that your keyframe um, your keyframe, let's see what it is. Interpolation is set to linear for spatial interpolation. If not, you're gonna get some bounciness here. So we're basically bouncing back to these. Again, We're since we reverse these keyframes, the motion is now reversed. The graphs are reversed, which we don't want. We want the, the graphs to be the same. So I'm just gonna reuse my tool here and re-add the motion. That's the beauty of the tool. And now you'll see that these are the same instead of opposite.
but we want something a little more unique to be going on now. We want this logo to turn into the, the Windows logo. So that'll be kind of cool. I'm just gonna create a layer new null object for myself. And at this point I can, let's see, do I need to do anything here? The answer is probably not. I could probably pre-comp this, control shift C, move all attributes to layer and name this um, uh, micro soft logo. Hit okay. And of course it broke. The reason being, the reason being is that I need to remap this to null one. And you'll see how it, that worked. But instead of remapping it to null one, I'm gonna remap it to null two and then remap, remap null, null two to null one. And you'll get the same effect there. The reason why I did it that way is because I want control over this null two for this Microsoft logo. So this null two, um, I guess what I should have probably done, I'm gonna move the anchor point over. Let's see, I hope that doesn't break anything. I hope that didn't break anything. Let's take a look. Nope, didn't break anything. And this Microsoft logo, I'm gonna make 3D and I'm gonna make this null object 3D. So now I have the ability to rotate this in the Y direction. But you'll notice when I bring in this logo here, bring the transparency down, lock it, I'm gonna move it to the bottom here. I'll shall just leave it on top. You can't get that perspective in After Effects with, without a camera, right? So. I'm gonna to have to add a, add a camera here, layer new camera. And it will it will mess some things up here, you'll see. Uh, mess a lot of things up, which is fine. It happens, messes things up. Um, let's see what happens when I bring this back to zero. It should be the same, should fix itself. So it comes over. But as it's coming over, we want it to turn. Now nah, we won't make it turn. We'll make it turn in right now. All right, well, maybe, I, you know, it's kind of up to you how you want these animations to go. I'm gonna do it in line with this. So I'm gonna set a Y rotational keyframe and I'm actually gonna open this up with a scale rotation, with a scale keyframe, but I'm gonna uncheck that. So that way I could I could stretch it in the X and Y direction and you'll see why in a second. So coming to this keyframe, hitting J, um, my position here for my null two, should also probably set a position keyframe. Um, no, you know what, I won't set a position keyframe. I'm actually just gonna scale this down until it fits, just like that. That way I don't have to mess with any more positions or anything like that. So here we go. Um, we're ready to rotate this bad boy. So I'm gonna rotate it just like that. Now again, without the camera, let's see what this would look like. Where's my camera? You're just not gonna, you're just not gonna get it. It just, it's just too much. Now you might be able to put it there and then scale it, which I, I guess you can. You might be able to do it just like that. Now let's see what this looks like full speed. Maybe you don't need the camera. Maybe I'm crazy. Hmm, actually you don't need the camera. Um, the good thing about the camera um, I'm just gonna reverse this a little bit, control Z, just so I can see my camera. The good thing about the camera here is that if you adjust this, you can you can really change the perspective a lot. Um, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Here, if I bring this forward, which for some reason my Z, anyways, you can change the perspective a little bit more. So I'm just gonna delete those, uh, rotate that. 
until it matches up prospectively and then change the Z scaling. Just like that, add the same motion to this, delete this guide layer. And from here, what I kind of want to do is I kind of want to add, let's see, a scale. I kind of want to do a little scaling and a little bit of a coloration here. So just so I maintain this color, or how am I going to maintain this color? Effect generate fill. I of course lose my color. But if I open this, I can come in here and copy this color. So I just copy that. If you didn't see what I did here, down here is the color code. I just hit control C on that color code. Now when I come back here, I can control V and just paste the same color code. Um, but what's great about this is I can set a color keyframe, hit you on the keyboard, and I want this to scale down very quickly. Something like that and turn to a dark black, like a dark gray. And I want this to happen very rapidly. So my keyframes look like this. It's very rapid. Not even rapid enough for me. Maybe we need smoothing on both ends. I'm just gonna just mess with these keyframes until it looks good. And I'll show you kind of what these keyframes look like or what the graphs look like in the graph editor once I'm done messing with them. I think that looks good. So they look kind of like that. Very fast, very spiky. So let's just check this out in full. Uh, I like to make the nulls invisible so that way I don't see the little boxes there. Let's see what this bad boy looks like. You know, I wonder what this would look like if this was all done at the same time as this motion here. Take a look. I don't know, it's pretty simple, but I like the look of it. Um, I guess the last thing I would do here is change all the color of these to the same blue and maybe increase the thickness of them to four, just so they stand out a little bit more, maybe 4.5. Yeah, that's what I would do. Maybe even set, maybe even five. Why, why not, let's go crazy. Let's be crazy here. I like that, I like that a lot. I'm a really big fan of that. So um, anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give it a like, subscribe, and check out other videos on this channel. I know it was long, I know it was a little complex, but uh, overall, I think it has a really cool effect. It's pretty simple, minimalistic, and I'll uh, see you next time. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching.